Today is a celebration, a celebration of love, of commitment, of friendship, of family, and of two people who are in it forever. Mandy and Shelvin, today we have come together to celebrate the love that you have found with each other. By being here today, each of us is declaring our support for your decision to join together in marriage. As family and friends, you form the community of support that surrounds Mandy and Shelvin. Each of you, by your presence here today, is being called upon to uphold them in <laughs> honoring and loving each other. Always stand beside them, never between them. Offer them your love and support, not your judgment. Encourage them with your kindness and loving hearts and honor this marriage into which they have come to be joined today. Mandy and Shelvin have chosen to share this moment with you, their immediate family and some very close friends. Although they plan to celebrate with many more of their family and friends throughout the day today, they have chosen to keep this very intimate and loving gathering, to keep this a very intimate and loving gathering. They know better than most that a relationship isn't easy and they wanted to share this with you to thank you for the support that you have given them over their nearly nine years of courtship oh leading up to this <laughs> special day. Why is marriage... He got dizzy. <laughs> why is marriage regarded as so critical? It is almost always shared with family and friends because despite all of our differences Love is what we all share. This is our one undisputed truth, that no matter what we believe, where we grew up, who we are, we know one thing, love. That's why both of you are standing here today. That's why these people are here to share this moment with you. Everyone here today has his or her own love story. Some are short, <laughs> some are long, some yet unwritten, while others are just getting to the good part. My love story is sitting right over there. <laughs> there are chapters in all of our stories that are sad or disappointing, and others that are exciting and full of adventure. And that brings them here, a time to pause, look back, and smile at all the moments that brought them here, and a time to look ahead at all the moments that are still to come. I'm here, we're all here, because we want those moments for you. We're here to hope with you, to support you, to be proud of you, and to remind you that love isn't always happily ever after. Love is the experience of writing your own story. It's not one moment, not even this moment, it's every moment. Big ones like saying I love you, moving in together, getting engaged, but mostly a million little ones that come between the big moments. Mm -hmm. Falling asleep next to one another, making dinner together, spending holidays with your families, binge-watching watch, binge TV shows, <laughs> getting a big hug when you get home from work. These everyday moments fuse together into one big experience. And even though this experience is so incredible, words fail us when we try to explain it. And that's just the way it is with love. It's meant to be felt, not described. By trying to describe love, but trying to describe love is one of our favorite pastimes. We use the words we have to write stories and poems and songs about love. And even though we describe love in different ways, and even though love can look different from one person to the next, we all know we see it here today, and we see it with the two of you. Mandy and Shelvin, I am honored that you asked me to officiate your wedding today. Since this is now the fifth wedding that I have officiated, 
Holly and I decided to ask a couple in our neighborhood if they would allow them to, over, to come over for dinner to talk about their 50 years together. And we did it within a week. During dinner, I heard the husband address his wife as honey, sweetie, dear, along with other terms of endearment. After dinner, I was talking to him in the garage, and I asked him how he kept the spark alive after all these years. He told me that he uses those terms of endearment because he forgot her real name years ago. <laughs> I've come up with a couple of quick pieces of advice for both of you today. You must constantly work at your marriage. Remember all the little things you've done. Let go of petty things. Consider each other's interests, wants, desires, and happiness every day. You're never too old to hold hands. Say I love you at least once a day. Don't go to sleep angry, but don't stay up all night fighting. Stand together. Speak words of appreciation and demonstrate gratitude in thoughtful ways. Always say thank you. Forgive and forget. Give each other an atmosphere in which each of you can grow. When you're wrong, admit it. When you're right, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> there is no more than one right way to do something. Never stop laughing. Envision and develop a plan for your future. Be proud of each other and celebrate your wins as a couple. You fell in love by chance, but you're here today because you're making a choice. You are both choosing each other. You've chosen to be with someone who enhances you, who makes you think, makes you smile, and makes every day brighter. You're about to make promises to each other that you intend to keep. You are going to vow to take care of each other, to stand up for one another, to find happiness in the other. <coughs> There's a simple premise to each of these promises. You're vowing to be there. I invite you to come and begin the adventure of your marriage by declaring your vows to one another. Let us take the first step to provide for our household a nourishing and pure diet, avoiding, <laughs> avoiding those foods injurious to healthy living. Let us take the second step to develop physical, mental, and spiritual powers. Let us take the third step to increase our wealth by righteous means and proper use. Let us take the fourth step to acquire knowledge, happiness, and harmony by mutual love and trust. Let us take the fifth step so that we are blessed with strong, virtuous, and heroic children. <laughs> Let us take the sixth step for self-restraint and longevity. <laughs> finally, oh, yes, yeah. finally, finally, let, let us take, take the seventh step, step and be true companions and remain, remain lifelong partners, partners by this wedlock. <laughs> Paul Bear, hey, come here. That's okay. You've both chosen to wear rings as a reminder of these promises. But often people say wedding bands are a perfect circle with no beginning and no end. But these rings did have a beginning. The stones were formed a long time ago, deep within the earth. Eventually, a series of lucky events caused them to rise to the surface, where someone dug them up. Metal was then liquefied in a <laughs> furnace, a furnace at a thousand degrees, molded, cooled, and painstakingly polished. Something beautiful was made from raw elements. Love is like that. It comes from humble beginnings, and through a combination of serendipity and effort, imperfect beings shape into something extraordinary. It's the process of making something beautiful where there was once nothing at all. As you look at these rings over the years, I hope you remember that you've created something invaluable. And just as I know you'll protect these rings, I'm confident you'll protect these commitments that you've made to one another today. Mm -hmm. 
Let me repeat that for me. Shelvin. Shelvin. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my promise. As a symbol of my promise. To always love you. To always love you. Cherish you. Cherish you. Honor you. Honor you. And respect you. And respect you. Mandy. Mandeline. <laughs> I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my promise. As a symbol of my promise. To always love you. To always love you. Cherish you. Cherish you. Honor you. Honor you. And respect you. And respect you. As you hold one another in mutual concern and shared respect, may you continue holding each other tightly in your hearts and form a strong bond, now and forever. Now, because you have chosen one another and pledged to love one another all the days of your lives before this community of family and friends, I do now, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Somebody else wants to give you the second kiss of the day. Give me a baby. Yeah, come here, Oh, I love you guys. Oh, great picture. Thank you guys. Oh, wonderful. Oh, <laughs>